Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, I'm just working on a friend's car here. I just wanted to take you through a high level overview on how I like to mount things and where I like to leave fuses and how I like to wire in general uh, Terminator X. So this is a uh, L92 with a cam. Don't worry, he has front wheels for the car. This is like a 78 Z28 and it is getting just a small 7875 turbo it's actually my old turbo kit off my camaro so this is essentially a don't bs me build uh, if you guys are familiar with that on sloppy mechanics um, and so yeah the goal here is maybe 600 something wheel horsepower uh, we'll try ethanol on it as well but in general just a street car with uh, a 50 cage in it maybe upgrade to a big turbo one day but straight to it, uh, I feel like a lot of people kind of get confused on exactly how the computer integrates with the stock uh, car harness and car fuse box. And I figured this is a good time to show you guys that. So under the dash over there, we have the car's fuse box. Under the dash here, we've got the Terminator X. And out back in the trunk, I've got a fuse panel I make. So this car has got a rear mounted battery. So essentially here's how this works. The factory fuse box up here under the dash, which uh, I'm not gonna go under there, but it's over there. All that's really being used for in this car is to power things like the wipers, the lights, and, and really that's it. Uh, so because we've got a rear mount battery, there's essentially one big power wire that feeds the fuse box And what we do is we take that big power wire and we run it all the way back to our fuse box back here So yeah, technically our fuse box is actually fused But what I've found doing this uh, is this is a really nice way to keep things clean So we'll have one big harness that runs down the side of the car with all the holly stuff and peripherals to the back straight to the battery and essentially if you ever have an issue with the car you look at this fuse box anything to do with the efi stuff is is this fuse panel anything to do with the headlights you know turn signals it's gonna be that fuse panel okay so that probably makes sense now the ecu itself right under the dash here it's got a big power harness that comes off of it which is this guy that also goes to the trunk. And along with that, we send uh, all of the trigger wires for our relays, as well as all of the big power wires for our relays. So in the case of this car, we've got from the ECU, really we've got the ECU power running back there. We've got the fan and fuel pump relay triggers running back there. And then we've got the big fan and fuel pump wires coming back out. So the nice thing about this is any sort of an EFI related issue you have, you pop your trunk and everything's here. All of your fuses, all of your relays, uh, anything for your line lock is back here, trans brake. Um, but yeah, just conceptually now you can imagine, we've got one big power wire for our fuse box going back there, which isn't that big. I mean, I think we ran a 10 gauge on this one. We've got the Holy power harness. Then we've got things like the, you know, the, the power wire for the fan runs from the back up to the front. Uh, so the reason I wanted to show you guys this is because a lot of people, uh, you know, when they put in one of these terminators, they'll have different wires kind of going all over the place. The factory Holly harness is pretty good, um, but it requires you to, to ground a few wires, give 12 volt to a few wires, and it just kind of gets sloppy because people patch wires into their factory fuse box and then if there's any sort of issue with the factory fuse box or any of the wires they've chose then they're possibly checking fuses there possibly checking fuses at the computer possibly checking fuses at the battery so i hope this makes sense to you guys why we do it this way or at least why i do it this way um so so really now you can understand that all of the big relay triggers and you know big power wires going to the front of the car they all run around here they all go to our fuse box in the back uh, and so really all that's left after that is just 
uh, what I call kind of like an auxiliary harness, which is this guy. Obviously, I don't have the Holly engine harness on. I'm waiting for a bulkhead that comes through the firewall. But on the auxiliary harness here, I've just got things, um, you know, essentially this is for boost control, is what this is. There's a, you know, we've got like a five volt, a sensor ground, uh, the PWM solenoid wires and such. So that runs off of Holly's IO harness. But like kind of from a high level, this, this kind of compartmentalizes the wiring a bit, which I like. So I guess if I was to give you another example of how some people may do this is they may put the computer under the dash, then they'll put a fan relay under the dash, they'll put another fuel pump relay under the dash, um, and then they maybe just be randomly fused in line wherever they work. Uh, they may have a power tap off the factory fuse box with 10 different, uh, you know, 10 different wires splitting out going to different relays. Then the car isn't really serviceable, right? If you have an issue with it, you're not able, you're not really able to get at any of the fuses or wiring because you can tell once the dash is back on, there's no room. But the advantage of doing it like that, if you have any issue, uh, it's all right here. And one other thing that I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna run an extra few wires, an extra few um, just 18 gauge trigger wires. And the idea is that we've got eight relays on here and we're only using five. So if we ever wanna use those other three relays, at least now we can trigger them from the front of the car if we need to. Maybe we don't even have to. But this is just a really easy, clean setup. Uh, so essentially this is like a blue C fuse box. These are terminal strips. So I've got inputs at the top, I've got outputs at the bottom. So essentially all the wiring from my computer goes to these input buses, oh, as you can't really see, but it goes to these uh, you know, input terminal strips at the top. Down at the bottom, these are the output terminal strips. These go out to things like the fan and the fuel pump in this case, uh, as well as line lock and trans brake, and then yeah, all the wiring is in one place, which is beautiful. If your car doesn't run, you come to this fuse box, which is good. Versus if you throw everything under the dash, if the car doesn't run, you pretty much pull over, get in a big argument and or divorce with your wife, and you have issues. So connecting the dots back here, essentially from our big blue C guy here, we will run this over to our battery switch, which I've got hidden away down there and then to the battery and really it's that simple uh, from the battery we'll have one big power wire that goes up to the starter the alternator will go over to the starter as well and um, yeah it's that simple so I hope this gives you guys just a decent idea of uh, you know how to lay these things out and as always let me know if you have any questions we will see you on the next one if you want to see some more of this car I could upload some videos I'm not sure if you guys care but I don't be asked me build but uh, I'll send some maybe I'll upload some videos when it's done it's a gonna be a pretty cool car should be a pretty nasty little street car thanks for checking it out and we will see you on the next one